One of the most important gods in the Sumerian and Babylonian pantheons was Enlil. Some myths state that he was the offspring of An, the primary Sumerian god. Furthermore, Enlil was believed to be the brother of the Sumerian mother goddess Aruru as well as the god of wind, or the sky between earth and heaven. It is believed that Enlil was married to Ninlil, who in Sumerian mythology was referred to as Sud. Enonna, the queen of heaven, and Ishka, the storm god known as Adad in Babylonian sources, are some of his offspring. Suan, a moon god called Sin in Akkadian. Nergil, an underworld deity. Ninurta, principally a god of war, also known as Ningursu. Enlil's minister and fire god Nuska. Shamash in Akkadian, the sun god Utu. The war god Zababa. And Inugi, the canal inspector. The cult of Enlil was centered in the Ikur, the mountain house, in the Sumerian religious capital of Nippur on the northern border of Sumer. The story of Enlil can be found in two Sumerian myths, Enlil and Ninlil and Enlil and Sud. Excavations at Nippur led to the discovery of these myths. Enlil and Ninlil. The myth of Enlil and Ninlil begins when Enlil spots the beautiful goddess Ninla bathing in the pure canal. Enlil approached her and offered kisses and love, but the goddess demurred, explaining she was young and innocent. If her parents found out that she had an affair, they would punish her. Still, Enlil persevered, eventually impregnating Ninlil. As a result of Enlil's rape of the goddess, the assembly of gods declared him unclean, and he was banished from the city. Even though Enlil's advances were immoral, Ninlil remained by his side, determined to bear him more children and to be with him. Enlil tried to get away, but Ninlil followed him and Enlil slept with her several more times. As the myth ends, Ninlil is praised for giving birth to Enlil's children, and Enlil is celebrated as bringing prosperity and fertility. Ninlil's desire to be a wife and to produce children caused her to follow Enlil, even though he raped and deceived her. The story also implies that, even though he wronged Ninlil and became an outcast, Enlil was never permanently barred from returning to civilization. According to one interpretation, Enlil was the god of earth and of the moist winds of spring. By interpreting Enlil's disappearance at the end of a long, dry summer and his return in the spring, the myth explained how nature became fertile and productive after he disappeared. Enlil and Sud Enlil and Sud also tell the story of the young god Enlil's search for a wife. The poem describes Enlil's infatuation with Sud, another name for Asura. Ninlil, their courtship, and their subsequent marriage. The story begins with Enlil, the great god of heaven, in search of a wife. He spotted Sud, a young girl who was the daughter of the goddess Nizaba, in the street in front of her house. Since the girl was alone in the street, Enlil assumed that she must be disreputable. As he was taken aback by Enlil's disrespectful speech, Sud tried to brush him off. He promised to rehabilitate her, give her proper clothing, and make her into a lady. Sud was shocked by this brash behavior and entered the house. Enlil persisted, saying he wanted to show his love for her. In the end, Enlil did not give up. His emissary, Nuska, went to her mother's house with bridal gifts to ask for her daughter's hand. In the name of Enlil, Nuska asked the goddess for her daughter's hand. Her great goddess was flattered that Enlil intended to marry Sud. In response, she said Enlil's behavior would be forgiven and she would be delighted to become Sud's mother-in-law. It was then that the finest perfumes were poured over Sud, and she and Enlil consummated their marriage. Enlil blessed his wife and named her Nintu, Lady of Childbirth. After being assigned the responsibility of all secrets pertaining to women, Nintu was a great fertility goddess and given a second name, Ninlil, meaning goddess of full-grown wheat. She was also the mistress of the scribal arts. Not only does this myth depict Enlil as a love-struck young man rather than a remote deity, but it also contains Mesopotamian views that a woman's role was to be fertile and to manage her husband's household.